Hello everyone, today we are going to talk about a comedy thriller film called Jackpot from 2024. Enjoy your viewing. Los Angeles 2030, Sean is the lucky owner of a winning lottery ticket. He tries to hide from the crazy crowd that is hunting him. Sean jumps over an obstacle and ends up in the next street, but they were waiting for him there too. Only his fighting skills help him survive and escape. Sean breaks into someone else's house, but he is out of luck because the woman recognizes him. And because of this, she kills him and takes all the winnings. We're going to be rich, she says. After a while, a TV crew led by Johnny arrives and hands over the long-awaited coupon. There are 18 hours left until the next drawing. Katie is riding the bus and sees an advertisement for a security agency that guarantees life safety. She has just recently arrived in the country and knows nothing about the lottery day, so she doesn't understand why people on the streets are acting so strangely. Meanwhile, Noel is sitting in his garage creating weapons, as he has his own agency where he offers protection to winners for a substantial sum of money. As for Katie, she is quite poor and has to live with Shady. Their conversation is interrupted by a guy named DJ, who brings them the news that today's lottery win will break all records and will amount to as much as $3 billion. The next day, Katie wakes up to a sewer backup, but that doesn't stop him from going to his job interview. In an attempt to get a prepared speech, Katie picks up a lottery card and registers as a new player. As soon as she leaves the office, a message is sent to everyone about the new winner. It turns out to be Katie. The other girls immediately try to kill her. Since Katie doesn't know anything about the drawing, she tries to calm the other girls down. But when they can't agree, she decides to hide in the martial arts section, where she is immediately recognized. The teacher orders them not to touch her, because he will get her, and anyone who opposes him will be seriously injured. When the man manages to grab Katie, Noel bursts into the building. He goes into combat mode and rescues the girl, followed by an offer of 10% of the winnings. While she is thinking, he offers five free security services, and all subsequent services will be 10% each. Katie signs off on it, and now they have a business relationship. To keep Katie safe, Noel ties her to him, while fighting off anyone who tries to approach them. A local serious man runs into the office, but when he sees Noel, he chooses to retreat. When everything is quiet, Noel helps people lie down on their sides, because no one should die. He explains that in 14 minutes the drone will locate her. Explaining the essence of the lottery and its rules, he puts Katie in the car as quickly as possible and runs away from the angry crowd. While all the people in the city receive the message about the winner, they have six hours to kill her. Because of this, everyone quits their jobs. How long has this nonsense been going on here? Asks Katie. I don't know, a few years, Noel replies. Katie wants to know if she can refuse the winnings. It turns out that it is possible, you just have to leave the city, but no one has ever done it. A few minutes later they are attacked by bikers. The girl gets into the car, forcing Noel to climb into the back seat. To save her life he puts a helmet on her and ejects her. However, the car cannot withstand the chase and breaks down. They are spotted by the police. Katie is happy that they will save her, but Noel reminds her that the law does not apply to police officers now. One of the officers pulls out a taser and shoots, but Noel manages to grab the wires and beat the cops. Katie seizes the moment and runs away. Pinky notices her on the street, and to hide her identity, she covers herself with a brochure, but does not take into account that the drone shows her on the map where she is now. The museum guard asks her not to be afraid of him. He promises to drive away the pursuers, and she can hide in the building. Katie tries to figure out where the nearest exit from the city is, but is interrupted by a call. Shady wants to reassure her that she is going to help and says that she is actually home right now, but Pinky exposes her lie. Shady takes out the guard and enters the museum. They quickly find Katie, and she defends herself with every object available, even a doll's head. The fight moves to another room. Shady grabs an axe and throws it at Katie, but it turns out to be fake. The guide immediately notices Katie, and all the people run to kill her. However, she is lucky because Noel is nearby, and he saves the girl once again. Even now, Katie still doesn't trust him, because if he helps her get out of the city, he won't get anything. Wouldn't it be easier for him to kill her? Katie talks to him, and then stuns him. Katie is unable to close the door because of the crowd breaking through. Noel tries to shoot the dart, but Katie is sure that he meant to shoot her. Obviously, he denies it, but Katie takes aim at him anyway. Noel sits down next to her and starts talking about his life. An Oscar falls out of Katie's pocket, which he really liked. Kathy admits that she decided to become an actress only for the sake of her mother, who loved watching movies. Her mother realized that Hollywood was a dirty place and gave her a keychain before she left. When Katie was a child, she was very famous and earned a lot of money, but her father stole everything and ran away. Noel supports the girl, and Katie begins to trust him, which is why she gives him her gun. For Noel, 
Other people are very important, and that's why he decided to protect people while making money. Shady had the idea to throw a man into the pool and find out the code to the bunker. This was not part of Noel's plan. He calls Lewis because he needs an urgent phone attack. All the phones around start exploding, and while everyone is trying to put out the flames on themselves, the couple quietly leaves. Being a decent man, Noel cannot pass by a man in trouble, and professionally extinguishes the flames. Outside, agents from a security agency were waiting for them. They were the ones Noel called. However, they order him to stay away from Katie. She screams that she will not go anywhere without him, and they have to let her get into the car. Katie asks Noel if he is on the team. He replies that he is a freelancer, and just asks them for a favor. The guard jokes with Noel, saying that as long as he is with them, she is completely safe. Later, they arrive at the base. There are armed men and high fences everywhere. Katie reminds them that guns are not allowed, but the guard replies that they have rubber bullets, and this helps to get around the ban. Lewis comes out of the building and calls himself a fan of Katie's, because most people would not have survived more than 15 minutes, and she lasted several hours without any help. Hearing the disparaging comments about Noel, Katie stands up for him and reminds him that she was not alone. Because of the phone attack, Katie lost her phone, and Lewis donates the agency's phone. There are four hours left until the end of the lottery. There is a stand in the building with all the surviving lottery participants, and if she signs the document, her face will appear on the stand. She is willing to sign the document, but on one condition, Noel must also get the money, because he saved her life much earlier than they did. Lewis is reluctant, but he gives his consent, and Katie signs the document. At this point, the crowd surrounds the building. In case of emergency, underground passages have been built under the base, through which Katie will get to the bunker. But before that, she needs to undergo a medical examination. Noel tells us that he used to work with Lewis. They were mercenaries to eliminate bandits, but it turned out that they were not told the truth, and some of the people were ordinary citizens. He had to resign, but the realization that he took the lives of innocent people still torments his soul, and he transfers some of the money to the families of the victims. Their conversation is interrupted by an employee of the company. The girl brought a device that can put on fake faces. Noel finds it strange, because everything looks incredibly expensive. How can Lewis and his firm keep this place with only 30% of the winnings? And they had no winners last year. He's probably killing everyone who comes to him. And when Lewis forbids Noel to go with Katie, she attacks Lewis. Noel opens the garage, and in the confusion he takes out the key card and gives it to Katie so that she can escape. Noel starts the autopilot cars, and Lewis realizes that Katie is hiding in one of them. The workers try to track the phone, but Katie has figured out how to turn off her geolocation. She takes control of the car, and the agency immediately notices. Lewis calls Katie and hints that if she doesn't turn the car around, someone close to her will die. Noel tells her not to listen to him and to leave the city. Then Lewis wounds him. Not wanting Noel to die, Katie has to turn around and meet him at an old theater. Lewis admits that when they were mercenaries, he knew who they were killing, but he didn't care because they were making a lot of money. Armed with a pistol, Katie enters the building. She threatens to end her life if he doesn't let Noel go. Lewis doesn't believe she's willing to do that for Noel. He says that there is nothing stopping him from erasing her fingerprints and making it look like a murder. For this case, Katie is broadcasting online. When she gets too close, she rams Lewis. The phone falls to the floor, and now everyone knows where she is. As Katie defends herself against the people and Lewis, Noel rips out the mount and starts spinning around like a ninja turtle. Grabbing Lewis, he asks Katie to run away, but Shady blocks the way. However, she loses consciousness from one blow. Noel shouts that there are only a few minutes left, and Katie climbs on a rocket so that no one will follow her. He knocks down the mount, but there were too many enemies. The agents break Noel's arms, allowing Lewis to continue the chase. Katie manages to pull out the grenade's pin, sending Lewis to the other side. At that moment, the game ends, and she becomes the final winner. In gratitude for her help, Katie promises to give 50% to Noel. The movie ends with a scene where Katie and Noel buy Lewis's firm, but they don't charge for protection, and they also open many charitable organizations. If you have watched the video so far, you should know that I am happy to have viewers like you. Thank you for watching to the end. Subscribe to the channel and follow the news. Klonsak Recapped was with you. See you soon.